Hello and welcome to this video where today we're looking at length contraction of, as part of the special relativity um, part of the AQA turning points option. So we're going to look at two things. Basically we're going to look at how you calculate length contraction and the experimental evidence for it. Now we saw in a previous video um, that Einstein basically said that the speed of light is a constant and that was one of his postulates when he came to actually come up with his idea of relativity. And um, in other words, that was one that was his starting point. And from that, he basically said, well, it may well be that time changes or distances that we measure change. In the time dilation video, we had a look to see um, how we came up with the idea that um, or how we calculate changes in time because you're traveling very quickly. In this video, we're going to look at changes in, in distances. So we're going to look at how you calculate length contraction. And then we're going to look at the experimental evidence for it. So um, we saw that basically um, time and space are relative to the observer. It doesn't matter what you're, you're what you're doing. The speed of light is the speed of light compared to you. Um, and the distances that you measure can be different to that of other observers. And the the equation that we've got is very very similar to that for time dilation. Um, it's just that in this case our our proper length this thing here which we'll come back to in a second is multiplied by the square root thing instead of divided by it so if we think about this we we need to go back to this idea of inertial frames so we've got two inertial frames uh, this one is moving at a speed relative to this one so we're sat in this one and we can watch this one go by but it's moving at a constant speed so if we measure a certain distance in this particular frame when it comes to measuring a different distance in this frame over here, it, the same object will potentially look to be different. So if we've got, for example, a one meter ruler in this frame over here, so it's one meter in its own rest frame, we would measure it to be to measure to be something different. And actually we'd measure it to be less than one meter. And the reason is because of this. Um, basically, so this thing here is the proper length. So this is the length of the object in its own rest frame. So if you were at rest compared to this thing, this is what it would measure. V is the velocity compared to U. The C is, again, the speed of light. And this is the relativistic length. So this is the length that you measure if you are in a different frame to the rest frame of the particular object. So provided you know these things here, then you can work out what this relativistic length is. So again, let's go back to the spaceship. We've got a, a ship of length 100 meters and it passes by the Earth at a speed of 0 0.95, the speed of light. So again, we've got our Earth here like this. And this spaceship, when people are on it, um, measures 100 meters. that. So um, the people that are on it measure it at 100 meters, so that's the L0. For the people that aren't on it, are gonna, they're, they're basically moving at a speed of 0.95c relative to this 100 meters. So if we basically just take our equation, we've got L equals L0 into 1 minus V squared over C squared to the half like that. Put our numbers in. Well, the the length is 100 meters. 1 minus speed of the frame is 0.95 c all squared divided by the speed of light squared to the power of a half. That's equal to 100 into 1 minus square these things gives us 0.95 squared times c squared over c squared to the half. The two c squareds cancel. And then we basically just do this on our calculator. So we've got 100 into 1 minus 0 0.95 squared to the power of a half. And so do that on our calculators and we get 31 meters. So the people on the ship are quite happy in basically saying that the ship is 100 meters long the people on the earth would measure the ship to be 31 meters and again it's not just an illusion 
is actually what we would measure it to be. So if, if, if we're on the Earth, this ship is 31 metres long. For the people on the ship, it's still 100 metres long. Now, when it comes to um, experimental evidence for it, it's, we use exactly the same experimental evidence that we use when we looked at time dilation. So we've got some muons, and muons are created up in the atmosphere. And if we put an observatory on top of a mountain at position A, and we put an observatory at position B, we can measure the fraction of muons that get from A down to B. And as we saw last time, basically the fraction of muons that get down to the bottom is about 80% of them do. The rest half-life of muons, so in the lab, they have a half-life of 2.2 times 10 to the minus 6 seconds. So when we're sat next to them, that's their half-life. And the speed of the muons as they pass down here is basically 0.996 times the speed of light, so very fast. So what we want to do is we want to, we're going to imagine that, um, if you like, we're sat with the muons now. So we're going to be in the same, exactly the same rest frame as the muons. And so for us, the mountain's going to look like it's moving past us. Um, so we're going to work out the height of the mountain as it passes us when we're sat with these muons. We're going to work out how long it takes for that to happen. We're then going to work out the number of half-lives that go past in that time and therefore the percentage of muons at the bottom. So for part A, the height of the mountain, well, we in its own rest frame, the height of the mountain is 2,000 metres. So we simply have to just use our L equals L0 one minus b squared over c squared to the power of a half and we just basically need to put our numbers in so in its own rest frame the mountain is 2000 meters high one minus well the velocity squared 0.996 c all squared divided by the speed of light squared to the power of a half. We'll simplify it like we did before because the c squareds will cancel. 1 minus, and then we've got 0 0.996 squared multiplied by c squared over c squared. So we've just got 0 0.996 squared to the power of a half. And if we, again, if we do that on our calculator, we get 178.7 meters. So from the muon's point of view, the mountain isn't 2,000 metres anymore. It's 178.7 metres instead. So B, we now want to work out how long it takes for the mountain to go past the muon. Well, the mountain's this high. We know the speed of the thing. So therefore, the time taken is just distance. So 178.7 divided by the speed, which is 0.9. 96 times the speed of light times 3 times 10 to the 8 and if we do that we get 5.98 times 10 times 10 to the minus 7 seconds so again from the muon's point of view that's basically how long it takes for this mountain to go past it so there, so now i want to calculate the number of rest half lives that go past in this particular time. So I know this time, I know the number of, I know the half lives. So the half life in this case doesn't change simply because we're not thinking about time changing. We're thinking about distance has changed, and because the distance has changed, the time it took to get from A to B has changed instead. So therefore, the number of half lives, number of t halves, so the number of half lives is just equal to. Um, this 5.98 times 10 to the minus 7. So that's the time it took to get from top to bottom. And if we divide that by the, by one half-life, that'll tell us how many fractions of a half-life we've got. If we do it on a calculator, we end up with 0.272. If you remember back to the last video, that's basically exactly the same number. So for part D, the intensity at the bottom is equal to, because we know the number of half-lives, 1 over 2 to the n, where n is the number of half-lives. So the fraction left at the bottom is 1 over 2 to the power of 0 0.272. And again, do that on your calculator, and you end up with 0 0.83. Alternatively, 
83%, which is exactly the same number that we got when we considered using exactly this data, what we considered when we looked at time dilation. So that's length contraction. Um, we simply needed to know how you calculate it and the experimental evidence for it. Um, the way we calculate it is simply by just using this equation here. Again, the tricky bit is making sure we've got the proper length this time, just like we did in the last video looking at the proper time um, in terms of experimental evidence. Basically, you have to be able to reproduce this calculation here. So that was length contraction um, as part of the AQA option for turning points. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.